It's March 2012. And on a Sunday afternoon in Brookings, South Dakota, it is electric. It is Selection Sunday for the upcoming men's NCAA basketball tournament. South Dakota State knows it's in, just waiting to find out who and where they will play. It is a symbol. They had envisioned this day when they decided to go to Division I, changing the culture of a university and a city. SDSU Athletics, Justin speaking. Justin Sell came on board to help facilitate the journey. He is the athletic director. He came from the University of Northern Iowa, a similar situation. He understands what this means. You know what, when I walked on campus and started talking to people and interviewing, I knew this was the place for me. Uh, you could sense it, the type of people, the value systems, the things that we emphasize here, academics are extremely important to the things we're doing, and we want to compete at a high level in Division I. A formation will take a defense and get them out of their comfort zone. It is Coach John Stiegelmeyer's weekly radio show. He is the football coach and by definition a focal point. He is one of the coaches who saw the transition from Division II to Division I. On this night, you can feel both the small town charm and the magnitude of a winning program. The coach has seen that transformation. When we went to Division I, I applied what my dad taught me on the farm. Work hard and be a good person, and things will work see out. See what happens. And uh, what has happened is we've had success. And it's been, you know, in a football program, success comes from a lot of people doing those things. So it's been fun. Uh, so anyway, we've got the whole football team. His partner is Tyler Merriam. He broadcasts the football and basketball games. He observes the beauty of this partnership. Coaches who belong to a community. As you know, you go to a high school game and you know, Coach Scott Nagy's son played high school basketball last year. You see him out there. Uh, Coach Stig's son played hockey. You go to these smaller events in high school and it's all connected. It's one big family. And so you go to the grocery store and they're there. They're not in some other part of the city or off at a suburb or whatever. It's so this is the final assembly. Jay Parker works in town. He played football for the Jackrabbits in the 80s when it was in the NCC. His son is now on the roster, a roster that feels different than during his days. The biggest thing that I've noticed is that South Dakota State is better at Division I than they were Division II. I think they, uh, you know, back in my day, we had a hard time recruiting talent, speed, into Brookings, South Dakota because it was Division II. Now that it's Division I, they're getting kids from all over the country, from all different walks of life. Ryan Souter came here to play baseball and stayed to open a business and pursue his other hobbies, hunting and fishing. He too feels a new energy. Just the athletes they are bringing in are, you know, a, a whole different level. And, you know, it's, it's great to see them. Last year we went down and watched both boys and girls basketball make it to the national championship, you know, the division one, yep. I mean, the big dance, yeah. you know, it was, it's just awesome. The women's basketball program has helped lead the way. Four NCAA tournament appearances. They have proven they can play with any team, anywhere, making statements about who they are along the way. You know, in our short period of time, we've beaten USC and Wisconsin and Minnesota, and you can kind of go down the list, and I think our players start to look at themselves differently, but now the community starts to look at our department differently, and uh, that transformation's been a lot of fun to be a part of. Part of the change comes from a mindset, the way you think of yourself, and educating a campus and a community on what is possible. I, I, I'm not surprised when you deal with college age young men that are highly uh, motivated and a bunch of coaches that are highly motivated. I'm an optimistic guy and so uh, I, I think you can win every game, uh, you, you can sign every recruit, all that stuff. Facilities are everything, here's the football stadium, but you want to add about a $30 million, you will add about a $30 million complex, huh? Yeah, we will. We've got the Dyke House Student Athlete Center that's in the north end of the stadium that's currently there. Uh, we'll expand our weight room in there, so we'll have strength and conditioning, we'll have athletic training. They are now working on keeping pace, facilities that will reflect a commitment. But they are also aware that in these parts, it is not just about buildings. It's about a belief and a culture that money does not buy, but that can be developed. 
I mean, I think they realize that they still don't have everything. If you do the same interview with the women's basketball coach at Nebraska, you're going to find they have different resources, different facilities, same with Minnesota. And our players come here knowing that there's some of those big hurdles to overcome, but they don't necessarily look at themselves differently. They still expect to compete on that stage and compete against those programs. They have learned things they could not know. When the Jackrabbits made the NCAA basketball tournament, the Jackrabbit became a hit. We have a unique mascot, and so we picked up a lot of people out there that are looking for that Cinderella team or looking for a, a neat story, and I think we were that for a lot of people too. So uh, hopefully we picked up some fans along the way. In this town, they were well aware of the Jacks. And in this town, you sense there is a marriage with the university, always has been. What athletics has done is help further the pride. We, we the last three years, we've averaged more people than we have seats for. And so we added uh, 1,000 seats uh, two years ago, and, and we've averaged uh, well over 1,000 to 2,000 more than we have seats. So it's a fun environment. It's not 50,000, it's 12 or 13,000, but it's packed. The exposure of football making the playoffs a couple of years ago, the exposure of Nate Walters and Bracket Busters and the national television coming to Brookings, I mean, it was nuts that day. Uh, we normally play a 7 o'clock basketball game at home and you're, you're tipping off before noon for television and it was crazy. It's interesting to watch as they move forward with a sense of optimism, of understanding where they've been and where they can go. The ceiling has been lifted to an extent and you sense the feeling is the best is yet to come. There's just an energy around here right now, uh, and we're all part of a family, we're all part of something, building something special, uh, and something special that we think is going to be here the next 30, 40, and 50 years, and uh, if that doesn't get you excited to come to work every day, uh, nothing will. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.